So let's go to the next slide and see what product category is about. So now, under product category, we're looking at product category trend, we're looking at sales trends, and we're looking at whether you're in the appropriate category. What we mean by product, why am I having problem pronouncing this word? Product category trend. So when we look at product category trend, we're saying you have your product, your, your brand, whatever it is that you're selling, ice cream, um, phone charger, watch, Tom Brown. That is the product category that you fall in. Just like when you go to Gigi or Tonaton and they will say the product categories over there are vehicles or the cars and then they have furniture and then they have those other categories. Uh -huh. So what category does your product fall under? What are the trends in that category? So if you're looking at sales trends, are the sales increasing if you're selling um, shirts or jeans? In the last year or two, how have the sales of shirts and jeans been in the country or in the region or in the area that you are focused on? These things can give you an idea of what is going on. Is it that sales have been increasing? If sales are increasing, why is that? Are sales decreasing in that product category? Why is that? If the product category is, let's say, chocolate. When and where, why, how are sales increasing and decreasing? Of course, you know, during Valentine, getting to and a little after Valentine, sales of chocolates are going to go up because people want to show love. Of course, sometimes to around, um, you know, festivities, Christmas, Easter, People like to buy it. Now, it is an all-year-round product, but there are certain times that they peak. So as a media planner, media buyer, if you're planning your, your media buying or, or you're planning your media for a year, when do you think will be ideal seasons or times for you to push in more appearances for chocolate? Then you know that, oh, okay, um, even though... I am showing two adverts uh, a month or three adverts in a month in January or in July. When it is in February, I'd have to show about 10 adverts within this period because this is when people are more inclined towards purchasing my chocolate. Or if it is toys, children toys, you know, getting to Christmas. Hey, mom, you know, it you. I want doll. I want this. So children... People buy these things for their children. So when you have an idea of these pro your product category trends, you know when to hopefully pump in more. Sometimes too, you may this, you may look at your trend sales and then see that hmm, within May to July, our products, the sale of our products go down. But I want it to go up so that we can even make money within this period. Then. I mean, of course, you don't you don't take the decision alone if that's what your client wants. Then, of course, when it gets there, when you're planning your media, you know how to schedule it so that it, it can achieve the aim that you're looking for. So sales trends or category trends could be seasonal and depend on economic, political, social, cultural reasons. Yeah. Uh -huh. So maybe because of a certain gar festival, Maybe, um, I don't know what the guns you use during their festivals. Maybe eggs or maybe popoy. Maybe sales of the products within those categories go up. You understand? Aha. It could be um, economic. Maybe money no day. You know, maybe um, the country is facing some economic challenges. And so a lot of people have cut down on their spending. That could be what is causing that. So all these things will give you an idea of what is happening in the product category and then it will help you know how to schedule your media. Um, sales trends, same. 
But you see, when we talk about sales trends, again, we're talking about how much money or how many, how much people are buying within that period. And again, I think when I was explaining the product category, I think I gave you an idea of what sales trends is, um, is talking about. So we'll skip that and then we'll go to appropriate category. Are you in the right category? Sometimes my clients tell me, why, why is this important? Why, why are we talking about category? I want people to buy my product. This category thing, it, it is not important to me. But you see, it is very important. Let me give an example of Vitamilk. Now, Vitamilk is milk. Yeah? But they hardly put themselves in the category of milk product. You understand? Vitamilk says a year kasa. And then you see them running these adverts over and over again. Vitamilk is positioning itself or putting itself in the category of first of all meal, and then it is positioning itself in the category of something like an a nutritious or an energy drink. If, if, if I may use the word energy drink, but a nutritious um, substitute. So when they run the adverts, you see a strong and muscular man like Steven Tonado appear, you know, running to save people from a vehicle. He, he tears, uh, you know, the door down, lifts somebody out of the vehicle and then it's like, whoa, Steven appear. And then it is all because he drank Vitamilk. So they're trying to show how... It gives strength. It gives energy. Like, ah, I did an energy drink. And I say, so they, they are trying to put themselves there. And then at the same time, they remind you that, and then they say it's a meal on its own. So they are positioning themselves also as like food, not like milk. You know, when people see it as milk, it's like you finish topping. Let me add this on top kind of thing. But they wanted people to see it as food itself so that people will say, I am hungry. What am I going to have for lunch? Let me take Vitamilk and bread or whatever it is you, you understand. So because of that category they have put themselves in, it has affected the nature of their adverts. It has affected, it will affect the nature of even their sponsorships. So it's likely if they are having this, maybe I, I hardly watch this Mr. Ghana thing that they do, but they are likely to sponsor those kind of programs so that if people see people lifting weights and then they see Vitamilk as a sponsor, their minds go to, hmm, if I need strength, if I need energy, if I'm feeling tired or what, I'm in mobile kungu madiasu. You understand? Sometimes, choosing the, app, not even sometimes, all the time, choosing the appropriate category for your product can even change your fortunes. When I say your fortunes, I mean how people patronize it. Aha. So take, for instance, Graphic and Times. I'm not talking about the newspapers, Graphic and Times. I'm talking about the other photo you see there, a burning cut here. Uh, you know the technical name we give to it is Graphic and Times. I think, I don't know, probably it's because it used to be wrapped in newspapers and that's probably why they called it Graphic and Times. Probably, if you know the reason it is called graphic and times i would love if you could give me a heads up so let's take graphic and times now graphic and times people take it as you know snack it's a snack but did you know that in the past i mean long time ago our elders used it as like mouth freshener so um imagine uh polygamous family and the man is married to about three women and he's going to this woman's hut today to you know copulate he pours some graphic and times into his hands he starts chewing you realize after chewing graphic and times your mouth starts smelling nice it, it has this nice aroma so they were using it as, as mouth freshener before you go enter the hut for copulation you chew graphic and times for your mouth to smell sweet so that when you are kissing and stuff it doesn't put people off so imagine a company branding i mean 
you know, selling graphic end times. And rather than just presenting itself as a snack, it also presents itself as something like a mouth freshener. So they, in their in the running of the adverts, they show somebody in the office chewing graphic and times after eating fufu and live soup, you know, because it will enter your nose and everything. You chew graphic and times and then your boss will call you, hey, what are you doing? I come and do a presentation. And then even whilst they are doing the presentation, like, mm, you're smelling good, you know, because graphic and times. So when people see it as such, now remember, the category of the product now has moved from just snacks to a mouth freshener. So more and more people will buy it and put it in their bags just in case they are in the office or they are meeting someone and they don't want to chew gum. You know, sometimes after eating gum, if after eating food, if you chew gum, sometimes you get hungry again because of the way gum works. The saliva, creating. You know, when you chew gum, your mouth feels, because of the up and down movement, you are masticating. So it produces saliva. Your, your stomach produces more, I think, hydrochloric acid so that the food that is coming will be digested. Meanwhile, no food is coming. So what happens is um, you get hungry again quickly. So maybe you don't want to chew gum and then graphic and times is there and then you chew. And then, so you see how by changing the category or adding some other category, product categories to where your product fits in, you can increase your sales. So by changing product category, it can also affect how or which media you may decide to run your advertisements in. Now, again, looking at our competition, brand trends, we have already looked at product category. Um, you look at by product category, we're looking at what product category we find ourselves in. Um, we're looking at sales trend, what's going on there. How many people are making, or how many companies are making good sales um, against yours? And we have, we, have all, we have also looked at appropriate category, looking at appropriate category for your product or service, juxtaposing that against what the competition mm -hmm. is doing. Now we are looking at brand trend. So we are asking ourselves who are the key players? What are the advertising channels? What is the nature of the competition? How is it positioned? Where is it sold? When we say key players, when you're doing research into brand trends, when you say key players, we're looking at which brands are well known in that category that your product is in. Why do you need to know which brands are key players? Because it helps you do the second one, which is it helps you see or know which advertising channels that they are using. You see, even though you want to be unique, it helps if you know what the competition is up to. Because when you know more about your competitor, it helps you better know how to also, you to use you come out, how you also present yourself. So are there few key players in the industry or are there many key players in the industry? You understand? What, what are the advertising channels that they often use so that you can also be there because if people are always seeing a certain brand on TV, your competitors on TV, and you are also not there on TV, maybe they may see you in a different light from how they see them. So sometimes you have to match your competitors. Let people see you where your competitors are also seen so that at least it can also help them when they are making decisions. What is the advertising spend of your competition? How much are they spending on adverts? Some will say, hey, I mean, how I go know? Of course, your competitor will not come to you and say, hey, could you, Charlie, last month I spent this on advertising. No. Even if the person is your brother, chances are if your brother knows you're a competitor or your sister knows you're a competitor, the person may not give you information because it will be good in the company. So what you can do is you observe, you monitor. And that is why there is another um, job opportunity for you as advertisers in the area of monitoring, yeah, research and monitoring, because a lot of these companies would love to have data on what 
their competitors are doing and they don't have the time they don't have the resources to um, conduct such research so you can set up a company and what you do is you do research on all brands in a certain product category and then when these brands are looking for that data you sell it to them so how do you know what they are spending if they are not telling you you may not know what um how much nestle is spending on adverts in a quarter but you can let somebody or a company do media monitoring for you so they see okay um they have four adverts on um, joy fm um, they have two tv adverts on cttv they have they monitor these media houses and then they give feedback on where they have your adverts of course how much they charge these media houses charge that one is no secret if you go to joy fm and ask them please how much do you charge prime time from this time to that time they will tell you so it gives you an idea if they have two adverts here they have three radio adverts here and then they have these ones here on social media and there then they are spending about this figure so gives you an idea of where they are placing their ads and how much they are spending that could also guide you in your media planning and buying nature of competition by nature of competition what i mean is are they competing based on you know advertisements are they competing based on promotions when you look at our telecommunication industry mtn um, tigo vodafone one of the standout ways by which they compete is through promotions so everybody is giving out this everybody is saying um, make this call and you get that call this person and you get this um, don't call this person and then you get that you know everybody's giving promotion giving out freebies with the hope of attracting more customers over there so if that is the nature of their their the competition if it is promotion based yeah how are you as a media planner or media buyer going to go about yours too are you going to suggest for uh, certain promotions to be also be done because remember a couple of lectures ago we indicated that it is ideal for a media planner or buyer to be part of the creative team to be part of the whole decision making team when everything starts out because all these important um, information can be provided by the media planner and buyer when they are planning as to how to go about the whole marketing campaign how is it positioned i think we talked about positioning and how people see kfc or how people may see kfc and um, burger king based on how they have presented themselves so far so how have your competitors presented themselves to the audience are you also going to copy that through your ads or are you going to do something different if a company is running ads solely on social media you know running their social media ads maybe they are trying to present themselves as tech savvy maybe they are trying to position themselves as you know with the youth with the young because they often are on social media is that how you also want to position yourself or you would want to present yourself to the elderly and say challenge yantanas ni amfadrin you know how have your competitors positioned themselves you you often hear that people say go that there i am paying for answer you know so it's like you hardly see a young guy between the ages of 18 20 to 30 or so going to a pub and say challenge what will you drink and then they say give me goda people ask are we are okra the question is when did goda say me i am for old people i don't think they have done that but because of how maybe they have presented themselves maybe it's because uh, someone would say maybe it has been in the system for long but so have the others so why are people perceiving it as paying for sir i don't know if they have positioned themselves as that because i hardly see their ads and i haven't really paid attention to how they are promoting themselves but if that is the perception why and if they are your competitor are you also going to position yourself as that or you're going to position yourself in a certain way and s- selecting certain media types goes a long way into positioning or presenting yourself in a certain way in the minds of the audience so that's also important and then of course where is your product sold where are your competitors selling their products 
Because again, sometimes where you are selling your product says a lot. If you are looking for a certain kind of fruit to buy and you only see it at, let's say, a crown mall or a max mart or, you know, certain shops, the, the perception you give to the product is, hey, Charlie, this one there is high time kind of product where you, you don't find it in any ragamorphian places. Sometimes too, you may you may decide to sell your products at a certain place or a certain um, certain kinds of shops because of how you want to present yourself. Because of how you want to present yourself, you remember some years ago, people said that Guinness was sold in pharmacies. Um, it could be rumors. I, I can't confirm or deny that. But if they're selling it, let's let's for purposes of this discussion, let's say they were indeed sold in drugstores. What kind of perception do you think people would have had about the, the product? That Charlie, sure, Guinness is a drug, a drug because drugstore cry at all. You know, we are selling this in the drugstore, so it's not just alcohol; it's medicine, proper medicine. You know, that kind of thing. So sometimes, by remember that when we talk about media planning, media buying, when we talk about media, some people think it's just radio, TV. You know, ha. From the beginning lectures, you remember that there are a whole lot of platforms that. You can use oh yeah even even graffiti now are being used yeah ha g r a f f i t i yeah i think that's yeah those drawings and markings on the walls and all those and people use it to run ads so these are all platforms so sometimes the place you even decide to have your product can also affect um how people perceive it and all those things so when you're measuring your competition, you look at your key players in the um, in the market, you look at your advertising channels and their spend, you look at the nature of the competition, how are they competing? Is it the advert against advert? This one runs 42 adverts in a month, this one too also runs 43 or 40 or 50. Or are they focused more on promotions or is it both? How is the competition like? How are they fighting each other? How are they positioned? How are the various brands in the in the product category presenting themselves to the audience and where are these products being sold yeah Aha. so when you're doing all these things you're looking at the brand trends now we're also looking at market share we're finally looking at market share now i know most of you studied general arts because you wanted to dodge mathematics you don't like math and general arts most of the time you're learning literature economics you have missed more math here now when we we are talking about market share just look at the two words market share it's like what percentage of the market do you own what percentage of the market do you own so out of the people who purchase a certain product how many of those people do you own? How many of these people are yours? How many are buying? Or out of the number of products, milk, I mean, let's say out of the number of tins of milk that are sold in the Ghanaian market, what percentage of that is yours, is your brand's? Now, so I have put here various ways by which you can calculate your market share. You can look at your unit market share. You can look at your revenue market share. You can look at your share of wallet or share of requirements. Let's look at unit market share. When we talk about unit market share, the key word here is unit. So if it is tons of milk, we're talking about unit, so one ton of milk. So if we say unit market share, what I'm saying is when we are talking about the number of tons of milk that are sold in the market, how many of the tins of milk sold are for you? So to calculate that, what you'd have to find out is 
the unit sold over total market unit sold multiplied by 100. So when you say unit sold, I'm talking about your unit sold. Yeah. So if you are, um, if you are laying tete and you, you have this milk company called Lane Milk, how many Lane Milk tins were sold within that period, whether it's a quarter or a year, you decide the period you are doing your calculation with. So how many tins of um, Lane Tetas milk were bought? And then look at the total number of milk tins that were bought, multiplied by 100. So if 500 Lane Teta tins of milk were sold, and there were 2,000 total tins of milk bought, by 100 which means that that's 25 this one is simple mathematics which means that lane teta has 25 market share 25 percent market share when it comes to unit market share sometimes too you may not want to look at the unit market share how many tons of milk were bought because you want to look at the money rather than the unit of uh, the tons of milk so you can look at revenue market share revenue market share same idea you look at your sales made. If you if they bought 500 tons of milk, how much money did you make? Okay, um, one ton of milk is one CD, so 500 is, let's say, 500 CDs. So it means you have made sales of 500 CDs. Total market sales, out of the 2,000 tons of milk bought, how much was it? Okay, it was this so, so, so amount by 100. Then it give you an idea of your revenue market share. The share of wallet or share of requirement. Let me explain this by using the share of requirements. When we say something is requirement, of course, you know it is what is needed. So by share of requirements, what we mean is what does the client need? So let me break it down. Let's say you are Shelly Banahene. Let me use another person who also worries me. Shelly Banahine over here in the comments. Now, Shelly Banahine has a shop. And Shelly Banahine wants to know what is the share of requirement for tin tomatoes. What Shelly Banahine is looking for is, on the average, how many tins of tin tomatoes does one person need or does a family or an individual need in a month. So if Shelly Banahine finds out that on the average, a young man or a young woman who is living alone needs about 10 tons of tomato. I don't know which size you decide. It means that if that person buys five tins of Shelly Banahine's tin tomatoes, it means that the other five is being bought from somewhere from another brand. I, I don't know if so far you are getting it. Let me come again. Shelly Banahine tin tomatoes. Now, Shelly Banahine does research and finds out that an average individual needs five or ten tons of tin tomatoes to produce or prepare food within a month but when the individual comes to the shop the individual does not buy ten tons of Shelly Banahine tin tomatoes within that month that individual buys five tons of Shelly Banahine tin tomatoes within that month but if the share of re the requirement is ten then that means that you are only providing, Shelly Banahine tin tomatoes is only providing half of the requirements needed by the average person. So if Shelly Banahine tin tomatoes is providing half of the requirements of the tin tomatoes, then it means that Shelly Banahine's competitors are providing the other half. So that's why we say share of wallet or share of requirements. Yeah. So if 
an individual who drives a car needs to buy fuel, 500 CDs a month. And the person on average buys 200 CDs from Shell. That means that the 800 CDs that is left for the month, the person buys it from another brand. So if you want to calculate your share of requirement, normally share of requirements is used to gauge brand loyalty. Yeah. So this data is often gathered from loyal customers. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. So you know that this person often buys fuel from this filling station. So you maybe you have a, um, what do you call it? A questionnaire you ask. So how often do you, um, how, how much do you spend on fuel in a month? This, this, that, that, that. So how much fuel do you buy from this, this person in a month? It will give you an idea how much fuel they need in a month, how much they buy from you. And then you know that, okay, so me, I supply only 50% of their needs or their requirements or 40% of their requirements. And then the next question is, what should I do to increase my share of requirements to make them purchase from me the more? Is it running more ads? Is it running more promotions? Is it placing certain billboards here or there? Or is it running ads on certain media platforms that would make me increase people's share of requirements? Um, sorry, increase uh, my share of requirement percentage in people's buying profile. I hope that is clear. So when it comes to market share, that's basically what it is. Unit market share, revenue market share, and share of wallet or share of requirements. So those are the market share information that I would need you to pay attention to. There are a lot, but these are the three that I want you to pay attention to. One would ask, why am I even interested in market share? If you do not know what percentage of the market you hold, you may not have a good idea of how vigorous your campaign should be or how silent or gentle it should be so the more the more you know about the market share whether the union market share revenue market share or share of requirement to give you an idea of how strong your presence should be before the people i hope that is clear so in summary we have looked today at the marketplace we have looked at the importance of who we are as a brand, finding out more about our brand, the competition, our brand, what we have been doing in the past, our success stories, you know, um, how has it been positioned in the past. We have also looked at why it's important to look at our competition. And in looking at our competition, we have identified the product category, brand trends, and market share are three key areas that we should be looking at. And the product category, we have decided to look at the trends of product category. What is what's happening there? Is the sales increasing, decreasing? Is it seasonal? Is there economic reasons? Are there cultural reasons to the trends in the product category? Are we in the appropriate category? That's also important in product category. We have also looked at brand trends. Who are the key players? What are the advertising channels they are using? How much are they spending? What's the nature of the competition? How are they positioning themselves? Where are they selling them uh, their products? Of course, where they sell their products can fall under how they are positioning themselves. We have also finally looked at market share and why it is important for media planners and buyers to look at market share. So that will be all for now. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and then ask.